as a country, we are confronted with a situation where every Zimbabwean is suffocated to the extent that they can't breathe. Women can't breathe. Youths can't breathe. Teachers can't breathe. Nurses can't breathe. And everyone else can't breathe. Our clear and unambiguous message to the ZANU-PF government is that it must, with immediate effect, restore civil servant salaries to the pre-September 2018 period, come up with social safety nets for the vulnerable, and implement pro-poor policies. The country shall be holding by elections in less than one month from now. The MDCT took a principled decision not to participate in the upcoming by-elections because we don't want to fragment the opposition vote. We have graduated from a dark past of needless fragmentation. MDC team members and supporters will play their part in the upcoming by-elections as responsible citizens and eligible voters because we are conscious of the fact that a complete boycott of the election will advantage Zanu PF. At an opportune time, we will announce whom we are urging our members and supporters to vote for on the 26th of March. This is the signal that will direct our troops, members, supporters, and the general electorate towards an overwhelming victory on the 26th of March. We therefore want to use this opportunity to implore the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission to deliver a free, fair, and credible election process that accords with constitutional standards. Further, we strongly condemn the recent incidents of ZANU-PF sponsored political violence that were witnessed in Gokwe and Kwekwe over the past weekend. We call on law enforcement agencies to leave no stone unturned in bringing the perpetrators to book. For the past 22 years, the journey and the struggle for democracy has not been easy. We have fallen in the process as well as erred in a number of occasions. I would, like, I would also like to mention with a heavy heart that as politicians, we have made mistakes in the past. And it is important that when, we, when one makes a mistake, they admit they have made a mistake and then use that mistake as a stepping stone to success. Collectively, myself included, we have made mistakes. It is high time we acknowledge and take note of our mistakes and use those mistakes to shape our future. The country is due to hold its next plebiscite next year. The sad reality is that the opposition is currently fragmented, which continues to give a new lease of life to the failed ZANU-PF leadership, which has totally abandoned the people of Zimbabwe. A closer look at the 2018 harmonized election results in Matebelen South, Matebelen North, and Bulawayo clearly demonstrate the negative effects of opposition fragmentation. In Bulawayo, for instance, it was for the first time since 2000 that the mainstream MDC vote was below 50%, whereas the combined MDC vote would have polled 58.1%. In Matebelen North Province, the then MDC Alliance polled 37.8% of the vote, and our MDCT polled 9.5% of the votes, meaning that the combined MDC vote was 47.3%, which was 7.8% more than the ZANU PF vote. In Dupane West, Gai South, and Gai North, the combined MDC Alliance and MDCT vote was comfortably greater than the ZANU PF vote. This means that a united opposition would have won control of this province with eight out of 13 constituencies. In Matebele and South Province, the MDC Alliance won 30.3% and MDCT won 5.2%. The combined MDCs would have polled 35.5% of the vote. Additionally, Gwanda North, Gwanda South and Majobo South were lost on a divided opposition vote. This means that a combined opposition would have four out of 13 constituencies in Matebele and South, or a third, which would have been a better representation of the citizenry. The MDCT, which I led, polled 162,000 votes at, par at parliamentary level, 
which would have undoubtedly contributed to more proportional representation National Assembly members and senators for a united MDC. Let me hasten to say that the needless fragmentation of the opposition has not only deflated hopes and punctured national confidence, but it has also slowly led to people staying away from national processes and losing faith in elections. It is in this spirit that I'm urging the nation to rally together and to encourage each other to be active participants in national processes, especially in the ongoing voter registration blitz. Indeed, coalitions, slogans, and our endless complaints in the township, in the villages, will not help us if we do not register to vote. In our various locations and in all our social networks, let us register to vote because our future is literally on our hands. We stand on the cusp of a new country and only a huge turnout on the polling day will make a palpable difference. Students, vendors, traditional leaders, women's groups, war veterans, and other social movements must all turn out in their numbers to register to vote. There are inspiring examples in the region for people to believe that change through an election is possible. We have examples in Zambia and Malawi which demonstrated that change is possible when people come together and unite for a good cause. Similarly, the situation in our beloved country is pointing to the need for unity of purpose. Unity amongst opposition political parties is of paramount importance as it will result in the formation of a formidable force to confront ZANU-PF. The formidable force must start to speak with one voice, it must start to act with one voice, it must start to vote with one voice. It is high time as opposition parties we converge and mobilize citizens and together unite for a common cause. And that common cause being a new Zimbabwe, a new Zimbabwe with jobs, a new Zimbabwe with plenty of food, because Zimbabwe used to be the breadbasket of Africa, a new Zimbabwe with quality education and health, a new Zimbabwe where everyone will have a better life. We need to unapologetically preach the gospel of unity. In, in bars, in churches, in the villages, in the urban areas where we stay. Let us remind each other that future generations will not forgive us if we allow next year's chance to slip away. It is a glorious chance that comes to us, the ordinary people, once in five years, and we must make the most of it. Time has come for political parties, students, women's movements, vendors, war veterans, the church, labor, transport operators, and towns, the civil movement, and other social networks to come together and challenge the ZANU-PF regime. In view of this as MDC team, we are henceforth going to be working with like-minded opposition political parties because we are stronger together, and together we can deliver real change to the people of Zimbabwe. Yes, we can. As the MDC team, we are today sending a message to the world that together we are stronger and indeed together we can and together we will go far. I would like to conclude by emphasizing that the hour has come for us to walk together every step of the way in our quest to deliver real change so that every Zimbabwean lives in a Zimbabwe where there is equal distribution of resources and opportunities and the spirit of devolution. The hour has come for citizens to converge and vote for change. Together we can make a difference. I thank you.